Chefeteers. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to be continuing on our journey to an organized kitchen. We are uh, back with professional organizer Pam. Thank you for joining us this morning. And today we're going to talk about how to organize as a team. No matter the size of the house, typically there is only one kitchen. So if you're living with roommates or a family, it's a pretty common spot that you're all gonna have to share. And so it's really important that your organization in the kitchen be a team effort and something that will work for every part of your team. And so today we're gonna talk about that team in terms of adult team members. So whether that is roommates or significant others. Um, and then in a future segment, we'll talk about the team being comprised of some children. So start us off today. Pam, how often do you organize for single people versus a group of people? Oh, I would say it's about half and half. Mm -hmm. Yes, 50% of the time it's single, 50% of the time it's families. Interesting. So if you have roommates or spouse, spouses, sure, why not? <laughs> Everybody may have a different idea of what being organized um, in this shared space looks like. So how do you find common ground um, and how do you even start that conversation in a productive way? Well, the way you find common ground is to get people talking uh, about the issue and see, uh, see and hear what's going on. And so one of the ways I'll start is with what do you really like? What are one or two things you really like about the current setup? So, so starting with the positive. So some people uh, love having uh, the coffee pot you know, near the sink. Some people don't mind having the coffee pot, you know, behind behind the sink against a wall. So things like that. You start with what uh, does each of the person like, and then that also helps me start uh, thinking about how their brain works because the what we like and how we organize is based on our learning preferences. Um, really focusing on the positive, that way you can like start the conversation in agreement, not in conflict. Right. And then, and then after we've got that as like a, a nice platform, a nice structure to begin. And also they're like trusting, they're trusting that I'm hearing them. Then I can say, well, what, is there anything that uh, irritates you or anything that doesn't work well for you in the kitchen. And then, then it's like, ooh, okay, now we get into the real problem solving and uh, uh, thinking, creatively thinking of other ways to do things. So in past segments, we have talked a few times about finding a method that works for you and then getting in the habit of uh, sticking with it. So how do you find a method whenever there are multiple people? Well, the biggest thing is around a new habit. Okay, you've heard that your partner really likes to have no dishes in the sink. So are you willing to, and you have your snack in the evening, are you willing to rinse it out or put it directly into the dishwasher, things like that. So it's getting an agreement on a new habit and then setting the space that, you know, it's going to be practice. So you're not going to do it all the time. So also having the person who's looking forward to that clean sink in the morning is to set them up for not getting upset, but saying, you know, honey, would you keep your promise and remove this stuff in the sink? And the key thing is you want to say it before you're irritated because you know how when you live with somebody, you can really get each other's um, changes in the voice, 
uh, or the body language. And so it's real important to, if you feel that flash of anger, you know, to breathe and say, okay, I'm let that go. Yes, that's normal. That's my first reaction. And what am I committed to? Am I committed to saying to them what I always say, or am I committed to a new sentence that's going to come out of my mouth when I identify that they what they promised. So both people kind of adjusting what they've gotten used to and trying something new. Exactly, yes. So once you establish those systems that work for the whole team, are there any nonverbal communication tools you can use to reinforce those systems? Well, one of the easiest ones is when you're in the kitchen together and you see the person doing this new habit, uh, a nonverbal way would be, you know, give them a thumbs up. Um, if you're romantically involved, of course, you could, you could touch them on the shoulder, you could kiss them on the cheek, you could hug them. You're, you're really uh, cementing, you're showing them how much you appreciate. And, uh, and then there you wouldn't even have to say it, and, but you would be thinking, thank you so much for your cooperation around this. And what about labeling? Yes, if usually the person who likes labels already has a label maker and they have gone crazy. And inevitably they are matched up with someone in the kitchen that doesn't read labels. So, <laughs> so, the, so I tell the label, I would tell the label person, you know, it's all right you, that this person doesn't enjoy labels like you do. And the, uh, the other thing is if you really don't want to give up on labels, like you really want this person to, one thing you can do is add color. So you can take a Sharpie of different colors and add, if you say to your partner, hey, um, I'm going to put a red for anything in a can, you know, beside the canned goods, you know, would you, would is that something you think you'd notice? So, the, and the thing is, is you don't want to ask a question unless you're willing to hear yes or no. So <laughs> the other thing I think is, is handle your heartbreak that this person doesn't, you know, isn't excited about labels. Okay, so now I'm thinking about the canisters that uh, where you have one that says flour and sugar. And so, yes, yeah, so in that case, if you had a set of things, uh, and then you even had a, a little plastic um, box that you would have baking soda and that in so that you would pull it all out as a group, that can help. Um, and going back to where things are, most of us do great with repetition. So that's why the label person doesn't have to have labels on everything is because when we're thirsty, we know which cabinet to go to for the glass that's then gonna give us our beverage. Getting organized is a lot about getting started. And so we have developed a resource to help all of you get started with this conversation of organizing as a team. And whether you've lived in the same place with the same people for a while and you're looking to increase the efficiency or happiness in your kitchen, or if maybe you're moving into a new space or with new people for the first time, um, this printout can really help you. Um, it, we've got it started with some broader questions about kind of your style and what you like in the kitchen. And then it goes into looking at each area of the kitchen and helps guide you all to organizing it together in a way that will work for everyone. So um, check out the link below this page and you will be able to find that wonderful printout um, that Pam and I have put together. So our last question today deals with children in the kitchen. So if your roommates happen to be young 
children. What are some quick ways to get them involved in organizing um, and kind of start starting to include them in this team? Yes, well, kids, like adults, fun, fun is going to be your friend. The actual fun of mixing, uh, being involved in, in preparing the food because it's a, such a full experience, right? The, the five senses, the smell, and even the sounds in the kitchen of the pots and pans or bacon frying, these are very specific things. And um, especially smells, the science shows that those smells attach to memories even stronger than like touch or hearing. And so what a wonderful way to have your family interact and actually you are contributing to kids having great memories around the kitchen and food and family. I can't imagine anything more wonderful than that, that um, can make it fun, yes. And kids love getting their hands dirty. The stickier or the messier something is, as an adult, you may or may not be as excited about it, but typically kids are like, I want in there. <laughs> yes, yes, it's a very kinesthetic. And, and boy, that's one of the best types of learning is everything. The hearing, the eyes, the seeing, and the kinesthetic, yes. And the other, the other cool thing is you can also bring up the moments where nothing has to be a mistake. Mm -hmm. Like, or, oh, we don't have this. You also get the creative problem solving. Oh, we don't have this, but hey, we could put this and this together and that would work. So you're also sharing problem solving and, and not, not freaking out. You know, there's no no worries, to, no need to be real upset, and that you can be messy in the kitchen. That's a cool thing too. So nobody's wrong if they've got stuff all over them. The kitchen is a place of celebration and teaching, and because in our society we have and eating disorders and such, that the thing about the kitchen table and food and the kitchen is to have it be a place of harmony and not making people wrong or trying to control uh, people's eating because that is what sets things up sometimes in the future for not such good results. So this kitchen stuff is really important and can set your yourself and your whole family and everyone else you live with up for success in life. Infusing joy into every part. So if the kitchen is organized, you're more joyful as soon as you walk in. And if you're cooking food that you love, course you're going to be happy about it and then whenever you sit down to eat dinner you've already got all these positive happy joyful feelings there and now you really get to do the awesome part of in eating it yes. um, and sharing yes. that with your family and then yes. you know there is also that a lot of, some people will eat in front of the tv screen more often than at the dinner table um, but if you have put more love and joy into cooking that meal, you're going to be a little bit more likely to sit around the, the dinner table and talk about it and, and kind of continue that family. It's like a family event then. Yes, a family event. And it's a way to compliment everybody on how they contributed to it. And it's not lost on anyone that it's a team effort. Mm -hmm. Thank you again for joining us. We had so much fun talking about this building a team around organizing your kitchen. We're excited for our next episode where we dive even deeper into this. So we hope that you all learned a few tips and please you know, use that principle in any way you'd like. And we look forward to chatting in soon. Thank you.